Destiny Preparation Church. Can y'all help me? Put your hands together. Come on. Hello, this is Pastor David Stewart of Destiny Preparation Church, welcoming you once again to our program, Road to Destiny, brought to you by Destiny Preparation Church. I'm so happy to have you with us again on this program this week. I pray that God has blessed you. You know, we're moving on here in time, and you know, God has truly been blessing us as well. The atmosphere around here has been powerful as God took us from the beginning of this year and really prepared us for something great and different this year. The anointing of God has been in here, and, and what a wonderful time uh, we're having in, in coming more and more of what God would have us to be. I want to invite you to come and be a part of this at any time. We're, we're here for you. There's a church family to connect to. If you don't have have a church home. Listen, you need to have that connection. Sometimes some of the things you go through is rough <laughs> and you need something to connect up to some, and you need some people that, that are thinking in ways that you are. All your friends don't understand when you're trying to be like God and you're trying to do things the right way. All your friends can't understand that. So you need to connect up and I want to invite you to come and be a part of, uh, of, of, of our connection here at Destiny Preparation Church. We're located at 1230 Long Pond Road just down from Grease Ridge Mall. As you come right around the corner on Long Pond, we're right here in a big brick church right off from the street on Long Pond, 1230 Long Pond Road. And you can come to any of our services. The services take place right here, and they take place on Sundays and Wednesdays. Sundays, we have morning Sunday school at 10 uh, o'clock, followed by our uh, morning worship service at 1130 a.m. here. Come and join us. You know, if, you, if you've been watching the program for a while and been blessed by that, I just want to tell you that there's even more, because the things that happen here in the service, the power of God moving in and around us as we worship and open our hearts to him. And then even beyond that at the altar, listen, you may get a good word, amen, on, the, on television, but there's nothing like when God comes in and speaks to you personally and connects up with you through prayer and through the, through the word of God and through prophecy. There's power in the house of God as we come together. And I want to invite you to come and be a participant in that power. Join us here on Sunday or also on Wednesdays for our midweek Bible study. I, I do want to share with you, for those of you who watch the program and support the program, there's an opportunity for you to become involved and engaged in the, this ministry. You know, some people question what kind of things that they, they want to be involved in, but if you've been watching for a while, then you know what you're dealing with. And we have an opportunity that perhaps you can help us with. Uh, we were blessed to get involved in this television ministry very quickly about three years ago, and God supplied so much of what we needed in a rapid fashion in a matter of a couple of weeks, we went from having nothing to having cameras, to having connections, to having everything set up to be able to do it. All, all, the, all the production equipment, everything in just literally a few weeks. God blessed us to be able to do that. But you know, we're coming to a time now where some of the equipment is aging. The, the camera in particular is an older technology. It's still on tape and the tapes now are starting to falter. Uh, the ones that you get even brand new out of the package are not the same anymore because it's out of date and we need to upgrade our equipment. We lost almost half of a sermon a couple weeks ago, uh, but, and so it's time. And we need your, we'd like your help in, in doing this because this is a ministry to the community, to those in this area. If you wanna reach out and bless the community, then bless us in this effort. Uh, by sending us a donation for our upgraded equipment. You can send that to the church at Destiny Preparation Church. You can send it to our mailing address, which is 3177 Ladder Road, number 135, Rochester, New York, 14612. 
I invite you to send something there. We'd be happy to send you back a confirmation receipt that you can use for tax purposes or whatever you, you need to use that for. But you can be a blessing. You or your, perhaps even your business has something that you'd like to donate. We would be, love to have you become a part of the support of this ministry. And I thank you in advance for considering that. As the Lord blesses you, I pray that you'll consider returning that blessing back into this ministry. Now, I want to also remind you of something I mentioned last week, which starts this week on Wednesdays, a special service. We, we have our midweek Bible study every week on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. But we're starting a special series beginning this week on end time events. There have been a lot of things that have been going on over the past few months, all the way from the election back in November uh, to all the different decisions that have been made uh, surrounding policies to things happening globally, economically, uh, special events happening in the Middle East, all kind of things. And there have been a lot of questions as to all that's going on. By the way, don't forget about the climate changes and the things that are going on in, in that fashion as well. Many of these things have relevance to what God has told us about the end times. And I want to share with you a special series connecting the dots on some of the re relevance of these things to what God has said in his word. It's an amazing thing to see how these things begin to fit together more and more as we approach what the Bible says is going to happen. If you want to understand this, perhaps you've heard a lot of things and you may have even questions, I invite you to come and join us. We'll be on this for several weeks on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. starting this week and you're invited to come and join us. Now, when you come on Wednesdays, we meet in, on the classroom side so as you come, don't be surprised if you don't see uh, cars out in the main parking lot. We park in the back. So just come around the back. The sanctuary will be dark, but come around the back and then you'll see all the cars and you'll see a lit main entrance and come in that hallway there where the classrooms are will be very easy to find. And you're invited to come and join us. We're, we, we're, we're looking for people that, that aren't necessarily our regular, so don't feel like you're going to uh, not fit in or we're going to think something crazy. You are invited. We'll be happy to see you. Join us on Wednesday nights. Now, I want to take you into the Word of God now as well, and I want to take you to a sermon that comes from a few weeks ago that was a very powerful service here and a very strong statement that was made. The sermon is called, I Won't Go Back. And as you look at some things that have been going on in your life and you start getting ready for where God is taking you, sometimes you have to make that determination in your life that you're not going to go backwards. Backwards is not the answer. You're not going to go back where you've been. You have to go forward where God is going to lead you. I pray that this will bless you. And don't forget, you can contact us anytime if you have any questions, but feel free to come and join us in service at any of our regular times, including special services starting this Wednesday night. God bless you. I hope to see you in service real soon. And don't forget, call us. Be blessed. Sometimes many of us left those old ways to come into God and, and to find something new. And you become tempted in the midst of these things. I might as well just go on back to what I used to do. Be the way I used to be. I might as well, you know, I used to curse them out and, you know, that worked. I stopped cursing them out and they just acting crazier. So maybe I just need to go back to handling it again. Come on now. Amen. We get tempted to go on back. Amen. When I acted a certain way, people didn't treat me like this. Amen. When I handled my own business, I didn't have to worry about, amen, where my money was coming from. Saw somebody on television last night, I was watching a show, and, and there was this football player, former college player, amen, and he, he had excelled, and he, and he was working with these young kids, amen, in juvenile uh, uh, incarceration. And he hugged the one guy by the, by, the, by the arms, and he said, you know what, I heard that when you were out on the street selling crack, you were making four times my salary as a professional football player. 16 years old. Amen? As a temptation to say, you know, when I was doing what I used to do, I didn't have to worry about paying bills and having money and doing these things. When I used to do my hustle, amen, everything was okay. We get tempted to quit and go back to our old ways, the way it used to be, the way we used to handle things, the way we used to deal with things. But I want you to understand today that there is a tipping point. There, there's a tipping point in, in your pursuit. Amen. For those of us who are pursuing being what God wants to be, going forward and, and, and seeing God, amen, work in our lives. You made up in your mind that you wanted to change. You made up in your mind you wanted to get away from those things and you wanted something better. You made up in your mind that God had something better for you. Along your journey towards God, because a lot of times people feel like, you know, you make up your mind, you give yourself to God, everything is done. Oh no, <laughs> it's only just begun. 
because there are temptations, there are things that come. The world is changing and there are things that are trying to get you to quit, amen, and change your mind. But there's this tipping point along the way that we all have to deal with. The tipping point is in any effort to evolve or to change, there comes this, this, this point, this pressure point, this tipping point where ultimately you're going to be challenged as to whether your change is going to stick or not. For those who have tried to quit smoking, tried to quit drinking, tried to quit swearing, whatever it is, amen, you may be all right for a moment. Yeah, I'm done with that. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm not drinking no more. I'm putting the bottles away. Amen. Y'all saw the movie Airplane. Amen. Alcoholic, getting out of it. Amen. After, after everything that had happened, amen, he, 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 after all the shock, he decided, you know what? I'm, I'm throwing it all out. I'm getting rid of it. Took all, of it, all that alcohol, threw it all out. Amen? Because I'm not doing that no more. But then a tipping point came, a pressure point. Because he was now driven by, when he was okay when there was no pressure, but when pressure came, he had to decide whether he was going forward or going backwards. In all of our lives, as we seek to go after the things of God, there comes a pressure point that questions whether you're really going to stay on tune or whether you're going to go back to where you came. Some of you got saved this year. Thank God I left the world alone. Thank God I've got God in my life. Until pressure comes along. Until situations start changing, until friends start talking about you, until husband or wife starts not acting right, until your job money starts withering up, until things don't start working the way that you think they ought to work. It's a tipping point. It's a pressure point that you have to go through. And we all have to go through that because sooner or later, the, the new path that you started on starts conflicting with the old path you were on. As long as they're still together, you know how you get to a Y in the road, you got to choose one. As long as they're still together, you're okay. Okay, I'm serving God and nobody's bothering me, so I'm okay. I'm serving God and everything is still all right, and that's fine. I'm serving God and wonderful, but all of a sudden I'm serving God, but ooh, somebody doesn't like it. Hmm. Or I'm serving God, but now it's become a conflict because there's something I used to do that I still want to do. Mm -hmm. there, there's somebody I used to hang with that I, I really kind of still like. Uh, there's somebody who used to make me feel a certain way, and I still like feeling that way. Now, there's a conflict between the where, where your, your decision to serve God was at and the old way that you used to go. Now you're at a tipping point. Yes. Because you're going to have to decide whether you're still going to stay on this track or whether you're going to go back to where you came from. You're tempted to go back to those old things. Let me just tell you this, when you're, when you're in those situations, realize this, that going backwards never produces change. Mm -hmm. You came out of a situation, you came out of, uh, of, of trouble, you, you got out of some things, you got free. Going backwards, because where I'm going now, I'm, I'm seeing problems. Going backwards never produces change. It just takes you back to the same problems you left behind. And sometimes you leave those things alone for a while and you think, well, you know, it really wasn't all that bad. You know, I, there were some good days, there were some good things. He, he didn't really treat me that bad, it was just certain times he treated me. And, and so you know, you go backwards to where you came because you start thinking about those things. But you go back to the same problems you left behind. The same issues you ran away from. The same things you wanted to get away from are just the same things waiting for you when you go back to where you came. There are times that we have to go back to correct some things. Sometimes we, we may not have gotten some things right. Maybe, maybe we made some mistakes, so we got to go back and clear some things up so, to let some things go, to release, to, to readjust, because I may have turned the wrong way. But going backwards will never solve your problems, and they will never make anything back better. Look at somebody say, don't, don't go back. Don't go back. You don't need to go back. That's not the answer. Instead of going backwards, you're going to have to make the commitment to going forward. And oh, here it comes. Jesus. Because now you're at that tipping point. If you're going to see success through these things, you're going to have to make a commitment. Come on, somebody say it. Commitment. commitment. I know that's a bad word for some of us. Commitment. commitment. Say it again. Say commitment. commitment. In other words, sometimes we rather just wait and see how it works out just want to hold up and say uh, maybe and we'll just let it let it work itself out see how things are going to happen 
But sometimes if you want to see things really work in your life, if you want to see God truly interact in your life and make a difference, you are going to have to make a commitment. You're going to have to make a choice. You can't stay on the tipping point forever waiting to see which side is going to be better. You're going to have to choose a side. The problem with your tipping point is that going forward equals going into your unknown. Jesus. Going into your unknown equals going into questions and sometimes fear because you don't know what's ahead. At least on the old path, I knew the problems I was going to have. I knew what I was going to have to deal with. I knew how I was going to be treated. I knew what they were, how they were going to act. At least I got some comfort on the old path. I know what that's like. But on the new path, I don't know what's ahead of me. And so we get afraid. And we, we get questions. We don't understand it. And that's why it's difficult for us to sometimes make a commitment to that path. But the only way you can get past this tipping point is to make a commitment and go past where you've been. Otherwise, you will always be halted at the tipping point. Mm. You'll never get any further. You'll always be halted. Amen. You step away from it. You move back. Okay, I'm clear. You start walking again till the next tipping point comes. And you'll never make it any further than that tipping point until you do what? Make a commitment. Yes. You got to commit to going forward. You got to commit that no matter what it looks like, I'm on this path. No matter how difficult this situation, I made a commitment this is the way I'm going. No matter how hard the trials seem to come, I know they're not going to tear me up as long as I make a commitment to going forward in God. You got to make a choice. You got to make a choice. You've got to believe that what's on the other side of your tipping point is better than what you left behind in the first place. Oh, yes. I want you to hear this again. There's a tipping point. It's coming. If it hasn't come yet, it's coming. Amen. Amen? It's coming. It's your pressure point. It's your time of decision. And you have to make the choice to go forward past that point. If you wait there, you'll never get any further than that point. You're going to have to decide what's on the other side of this. It's got to be better than where I was. And therefore, I'm making my commitment no matter how dirty, how dark, how deep this gets. I'm going through it to get to the other side. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Turn with me to the book of Numbers, chapter 14. I want to show you something about this, this tipping point. In Numbers chapter 14, we hear the, the story, amen, of the children of Israel. And you're familiar with this story, amen, because you know that the children of Israel came out of Egypt. Amen. They came out of a destitute time. They came out of 400 years of slavery. They came out of times when they were being abused, when they were nothing. They were less than citizens. They were less than people. They were treated as slaves and treated accordingly. Amen. They didn't get the best. They didn't have the best. Now you realize they were from kings and princes, but they were being treated like slaves. Amen. Uh, their father Abraham was an owner of, 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 of all kinds of property and all kinds of things. He had servants that served him, but now they were being treated as less than citizens. They got out of that, thank God, hallelujah. They were rescued. God sent, amen, a, a messenger and brought them out of their slavery, out of their torture. You know, they were beaten to death. They were scorned. They were given just enough to survive. They left that mess behind and were liberated by God. They went through the wilderness and they had their time there. They went to the mountain and God gave them the word and instructed them and, and prepared to be their leader and the leader them in the great things. He was ready to take them into the promised land. They went through the wilderness in 40 days, and then they came to the River Jordan. Here's where the story picks up at the River Jordan as they are about to cross over into their promised land. Let me just size it up for you again. They came out of their slavery. They came out of their destitute. They came out of their problems. They came out of their abuse. They came out of their torture. They came out of people lying and cheating on them. They came out of needing somebody else to show them that they had value. They came out of somebody else trying to tell them that they were something worth something. And they were standing on their own feet. And here they were about ready to cross into the promised land. And they hit a tipping point. The Bible tells us the story of how the 12 spies were sent into the land. Two of those spies came back and declared that the, world, that the, that the land was a beautiful land. It was just as God promised them. 
It was beautiful. It had flowed with milk and honey. It had prepared buildings. They didn't even have to go in and build the buildings. The homes were already there. All they had to do was go into them. It was all set up like somebody buying, giving you a house you didn't even have to pay for. Come on, giving you property and you didn't have to do anything about it. Amen. Pouring into you blessings that you haven't even earned. There it is on the other side of Jordan. All you got to do is cross over. But they got to a tipping point. And ten of the spies came back and said, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, the land looks okay and all that, but there's giants in the land. There's stuff over there that's greater than we are. They, they make us look like little ants. They became intimidated because of, of the greatness of this enemy that stood in the way. You need to understand that on the other side, on, next to your blessing, there's a devil trying to take it from you. Oh, did y'all hear what I said? God has a blessing for you, but that sure enough, there's going to be a devil that's going to try and take it from you. And you're going to have to decide whether you're willing to cross past this tipping point or not. Numbers chapter 14, verse 1, it shares with us the response of the people to the spies that came in. And their response was not a good one. I'm going to read in the New Living Translation just the first three verses of Numbers 14. It says, then all the people began weeping aloud. Now listen, they got two reports. One report, great land, just as God promised, everything God spoke is there for us. We can take them. God's on our side. The other report says, uh, no, the giants there will get killed, we'll get squashed, we can't do it. They had a choice to choose, either believing what God said or believing what these other ten men said. It wasn't just Caleb and Joshua that said it, the two spies. It was God that said it. They were just confirming the word of God. But instead they believed the other ten. It says, then all the people began weeping aloud and they cried out all night. Their voices rose in a great chorus of complaint against Moses and Aaron. Now listen, you'd think they, they could have heard and said, oh yeah, this is just what God said. But because there was an obstacle there, because there was a pressure point there, they decided, uh, I don't know, I better stay away. They, 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 instead of being happy and excited, they got upset and sorrowful. They said, we wish we had died in Egypt yes. or even here in the wilderness, they wailed. Why is the Lord taking us to this country only to have us die in battle or our wives and little ones will be carried off as slaves? Let us get out of here and return to Egypt. <laughs> Egypt. Egypt. Really? Egypt. Where you were slaves. You going back to Egypt. You think they're going to treat you better than they did when you were there before? Hmm? Really? You're going back to Egypt where you could barely survive. Where the only thing you had was what they gave you. When they told you what you were and that's what you believed. You're going back to Egypt where your sons and your daughters were killed serving and in slavery. That's where you're going back to? Listen, when we go backwards, we go back just like the children of Israel going back to Egypt. When you know where you've come from and you know how you were treated and you know how the devil abused you and took advantage of you, how, why would you want to go back to alcohol when you know the life that it destroyed? Why would you want to go back to friends and to people that really only took advantage of you rather than blessing you? When they really only used you rather than help elevate you? Why would you want to go back to the things that really brought you down rather than making you better? Oh, you may have felt good for a moment, but don't you forget how you felt when you left, how abused you felt, how used, how you couldn't even remember what had happened to you. Don't even remember, don't forget, amen, how things really were back in Egypt. Whatever your Egypt situation was, wherever you came from, don't forget that you were on your way to a life of eternal damnation before you left to go where God was taking you. Do you really want to go back to Egypt? They said, we're out here just to die. We'd rather be back in Egypt again. We wish we had died in Egypt. Listen, they're standing there looking on the other side at the promised land, saying, I'd rather have died in Egypt. What kind of sense does that make? 
looking at the opportunity that stands before them in Christ, looking at the opportunity that stands before us in God, amen, to be all that he's called us to be, to be elevated, amen, and used by him, to be kings and priests that he's called us to be. How could you possibly look back and say, I'd rather have died in my mess than step through your tipping point today? Verse 3, let's get out of here and return back. Go back, really? To where you came from? I came to declare you today, after all you've heard and experienced, all you've come out of, after all that you've been through, you need to make up your mind that you're not going to quit now. Because what you're dealing with right now is just a moment in time. It's just a pressure point. It's just a moment that you've got to deal with on the way to what God is trying to take you to. No matter what it is that you're going after in God, there's always going to be some demon, some evil that's going to try and stop you. It may look like a person. It may look like a situation. It may look like a troubled time. It may look like a bad day. But something is always going to try and stop you from getting what God has for you. But you've got to make up your mind that I'm not going back. I'm not going back to what I came out of. I refuse to go back to where I came from. I know there's something ahead of me that is greater than where I've been. You got to make up your mind. I won't go back. Many get so close and quit. Get right to the edge of their opportunity and then give up can see it right in front of them and turn back around. How can you get so close to where God has you to be and then turn around? You've got to make up your mind that you're not going back. You've got to realize that your victory is right on the other side because you're at the tipping point. You're right on the edge. You're right at the point where if you just hold on a little bit longer, yes, Lord. victory is going to be yours. You've got to make up your mind. I won't go back. This program is being provided by Destiny Preparation Church. We'd like to invite you to join us in any of our services. If you're looking to better understand God's purpose for your life, if you'd like to experience the true presence of God, or you're in need of a church home, join us at Destiny Preparation Church. For more information about our services, ministry, or church family, See our website at destinypreparation.org or call 720-5426. Join us on the road to your destiny.